If you guys watched our last video, you would know that we jumped our Colorado and that we were taking it to the Colorado backcountry discovery route, immediately followed by the Utah backcountry discovery route, but the front end of the truck was still in pretty bad shape. We are eventually going to get a new high clearance bumper that can accommodate a winch. So I didn't want to replace this bumper with another stock bumper. I did the best I could to make this bumper look the best that it could. We installed a new grill and I believe it actually turned out rather well. So, uh, we leave tomorrow, and uh, the rack is still on the Gladiator. Here's the Colorado. Uh, we gotta get the top of the cover off, and we gotta, the extrusion parts, the, um, the crossbars just showed up. So, I gotta get the tent off, uh, swap out the crossbars, and then move it over. Should go as planned, as long as they remember to send me the um the bolt down or the clamp the bag the bed clamp since my jeep has a trail rail that it bolts into so as long as the bed clamps here should be good michael from haven ridge adventures came to help out this was huge we were so limited on time having his help really made leaving on time possible so the rack's on um <laughs> i'm so short on time i'm leaving tomorrow at like 8 a.m it's already uh six so I didn't film much, but it's on. Um, and we still need to transfer the, the diesel heater. Um, I guess it's snowing where we're going, so I'll definitely want the, the heater. And then the, uh, the diesel fuel, well, the diesel and the regular fuel will just go onto my extrusion slider. And that's what, what, this is for my regular fuel and that's for my diesel. So that's no big deal. I just have to find a spot to, to mount the, uh, or just, just basically strap in the diesel heater for now. It's bolted on the Gladiator, but it, that's not necessary. Um, it's just because we're so short on time. I'm just gonna strap it in. Uh, and I still have to move my fridge and my battery over. So still, I'm gonna be up late. We are ready to go. It's um, it's 9 a.m. We're rolling out. We barely, we barely got it together. Um, so, I'll give you guys a quick walk around. This uh, box here has our food in it, um, two bags of clothes, diesel heater just ratchet strapped in, but it's real secure. Um, I'll move that air compressor somewhere else later. That big black Pelican case up there, tools and um, recovery gear, <laughs> a little far away. Once we get into the snow, I'll probably pull some of the recovery gear out and just leave it back here, easy to access. Uh, food there, um, fuel and diesel, got our high lift, and then up here, pretty clean for now, uh, it's not overly uh, cluttered or anything, so that's nice, and then in the back we have our fridge, which is just ratchet strapped um, to the headrest poles, our camera gear, um, this is a bag of hygiene stuff, that's in a camera bag. Um, we have one more thing to do still. This is a DC to DC charger that I pulled out of the Gladiator last minute. And we have to stop at our shop and um, get some thick enough gauge wire so that we don't blow that up. Right now, um, we I moved my battery over to, the, the, to this truck, obviously. Um, and it's right here. It's going through the same ratchet strap that's securing the fridge. That's also going up to the uh, uh, headrest thing, pin, whatever. And uh, so yeah, um, uh, the fridge was at 85 degrees yesterday when we turned it on. And um, we cooled it all the way down to 28 and 31, is what it's at right now. And the battery's still at 13.1. Did that all on battery power. 
Uh, this has no way to charge right now. I didn't put any solar in it, um, but that is why we do need to get the DC to DC charger running because we are going to run the diesel heater off of it and the fridge. That's all we're going to run. We have our uh, Iron Man battery also, um, which I'll be charging off of the inverter that we're we're installing an inverter to run the DC to DC charger, and that's going to charge this battery, and the inverter is going to charge that. Um, and then in the safest form possible, without a fuse, I went with the fridge straight to the battery leads by just wrapping the terminals with wire. Um, super safe. Make sure you guys do that. Uh, make sure not to use fuses um, so that everything burns up all at once instead of uh, just popping a fuse. It's not nearly as exciting. Um, but no, I didn't have a choice. Uh, I know you guys will badger me on that. That's fine. I didn't have a choice. Uh, I had to start cooling this down. It was super late last night, so nobody was open. Um, at our shop, though, I will add an inline fuse and ring terminals to this. So uh, we'll do that in like 20 minutes from now. So yeah. Um, and you guys saw. Sorry, it's so overexposed. The sun is really bad right now. But the front end ended up turning out pretty good so we're gonna meet Mike at the shop and then we're gonna drive uh, nine hours to Idaho We had talked about driving to Colorado in a single push, but decided against it. We really wanted to enjoy this trip. We decided to stop in the middle, Idaho. More specifically, Max Creek. We would get there at night. We found a small pull-off and set up for the night, made a quick meal, and went to bed without knowing the beautiful view we were sleeping right next to. But when we woke up, we were surprised to see a beautiful reservoir of water. So we're competing on whose stove boils water faster. Um, mine's on the right, that's the MSR reactor, uh, which is like a mountaineering stove, but um, we lost the lid to it a long time ago in the mountains. And Mike's is just a jet boil. They have the same amount of water. <laughs> it's very stable, dude. There's no reason why we're competing except to be stupid. Uh, mine's, mine's starting to warm up, but yours is steaming. Yeah. Yours is starting to bubble. At altitude is where mine really like starts to work really well yeah when you compare it to other things because other other stoves have trouble at altitude yeah and that's the difference is I'm never gonna be at altitude I don't like sleeping on bricks of ice <laughs> yes I've lived at 13,000 I've lived up there almost all before well I lived at 6,000 feet at Colorado Springs Oh yeah, but is that really altitude though? I mean, 13,000 is high. Yeah. That'll be a test, doing it up on top of VDR in Colorado mm -hmm. at 13,000 feet. Mm -hmm. So the reactor is boiling and Mike's... It's hot. It's getting hot. No, it's hot. <laughs> I mean, I, I would I would be able to... No, it's... Yeah, it's... It's starting to bubble. Yeah. But, and it's good enough for hot coffee. Yep. Yeah. But to be fair, the reactor, no lid, and a bigger pot. Yes. Reactor so. smoked the jet boil. Yeah. 
Yeah, and words. again, though, I'm never going to be yeah. sleeping on a sheet of ice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>